And here is SOL topic number six, rational expressions and radical expressions. Let's first start with rational expressions. Rational expressions are those that involve fractions. You see the word ratio right there, and a ratio is a fraction. When we are typing a fraction on our Desmos calculator, we are using the forward slash on our keyboard, and that will pull up a fraction. Let's look at the four operations with fractions. For addition, we must have a common denominator. If we have a common denominator, we add the numerators together and put them over that same common denominator. Same thing with subtraction, we must have a common denominator. If we have a common denominator, we can subtract the numerators and put them over that same common denominator. When we are multiplying fractions, we just multiply straight across. We multiply the numerators together, we multiply the denominators together. You do not need a common denominator to multiply. You simply multiply straight across. For division, the first thing we want to do when we're dividing fractions is change it to a multiplication problem. We do that by taking the reciprocal of the second fraction, or simply flipping it upside down. Then we have a multiplication problem, and then we multiply straight across like we would with multiplying fractions. Let's take a look at our radical expressions. Radical expressions are those that involve the radical symbol. Let's first remember the relationship between rational exponent form and radical form. If you have a base that's raised to a fraction exponent or a rational exponent, that is a radical. The denominator of your exponent will become the index of your radical. So if you see a 2, it's a square root. If you see a 3, it's a cube root. The numerator of your exponent will become the exponent inside your radical. So it's important to remember the relationship between rational exponent form and radical form. Next, let's talk about like radicals. If you ever want to add or subtract radicals, they must be like radicals. And like radicals must have the same index, that's the number right here in the radical, and the same radicand. That's the number or expression underneath the radical. And also on our Desmos calculator, if you want to pull up a cube root or a fourth root or any type of root, we will pull up the keypad, go to functions, miscellaneous, and then call up this symbol, the nth root symbol. Next, the calculator tip for this packet is the add slider option in Desmos. What we're going to do is we're going to have a problem where, we're, where we are trying to simplify an expression. We're going to type the expression in Desmos. Now there are three letters we cannot use. Do not use X or Y because it will think you're trying to graph something. And do not use E because that's an irrational number. Any of the other letters will be fine. When you type an expression that involves any of the other letters, there will be an option to add slider, and we're going to click that option for our variable. Or if we have multiple variables, we'll add sliders for each of them. Once we do that, we're going to type in each of our answer choices, and we're going to adjust the slider until we find the decimal that matches the same decimal as the original expression. Let's look at what I'm talking about in our first example. So, it says which is equivalent to this expression. This is an expression that involves m and n. If you remember the math to solve this or to simplify this, try that. If you don't, let's see what we can do with our Desmos calculator. So, pull up your Desmos calculator. If you have not already done so, please pause the video and pull up your Desmos calculator. And I'm going to type the expression that I see right here. So I need a fraction. I'm typing our forward slash. And I've got 11 divided by, I'm using the same letters as they will, m squared, and then n, and then a subtraction to get to my other fraction. And that's 2 divided by m, n raised to the fourth power. Now you can see that it's asking if you want to add a slider for m and for n, or for all, and I'm going to choose all. So now I've got a slider that I can adjust for m, right now the default is that m is 1, and a slider for n, so that n is 1. Right now, if m is 1 and n is 1, this expression would be equal to 9. 
If I change the slider for M, you can see that the decimal will change or the value will change of my in my expression. Okay, great. I'm going to put it back to 1. And well, that's actually back to zero. There's one. Okay, so let's see which answer choice is going to have the same decimal. I'm going to start by typing in answer choice A. I'll pull up another thing here. It's a fraction, so there's my fraction. 9 divided by m squared n to the fourth. So the first thing I notice is that, oh, look, it's the same as the 9. But let's move one of these sliders, and it's not the same thing. I just moved it to 1.5, and the original problem has this decimal, and this answer choice has this decimal. So something's wrong with that, and I know that that is not an answer. So I'm going to put a big red X through answer choice A. Let's see what happens with B. Now, so not to confuse anything, I'm going to cancel this one out since I know that's not correct. And let's see what happens if I type in B. There's my fraction, 11N minus 2M, get to the denominator, M squared, N squared. So let's see what we've got right now. Okay, so I see that right now it's the same decimal. I wonder what happens if I slide this over a little bit more. And, oh yeah, it looks like that's the same decimal. Hmm. It looks like that might be the answer choice, but I haven't done anything with the N. I wonder what happens if I slide the N. Let's see now. Uh-oh. Now the original is 0.21 something, and this answer choice is not the same decimal. So just because it might work for one of the variables, it does not work for both variables. So that was tricky, but we know that B is not the answer. Let's move on to C. I'm going to cancel out this one and type in answer choice C. So I've got another fraction, and I've got 11n cubed minus 2m. Get to the denominator, and I've got m squared and n to the fourth. Okay. So, again, I note that the two decimals right now are the same thing. I'm going to slide m around a little bit and see, yep, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I'm slide to the negatives. It's the same thing. Let's now move the N and see if I get the same thing as well. Yep. When I slide both of these variables around, I'm getting the same exact decimal. So that must be the way to simplify, or at least to subtract, these two fractions. It's answer choice C. If you're still not sure, you can type in answer choice D and see that the decimals will not be the same. Example two, which is equivalent to this? Now this is a complex fraction, and if you know how to attack complex fractions, we'll try that the real mathematical way. But if you're not sure, then let's use Desmos and see how Desmos can help us. So let's pull up our Desmos calculator. I'm gonna choose to get rid of all of this at once. So if I go to this plus sign, no, nope, not the plus sign, if I go to the settings and say delete all, and now they're all gone. I'm gonna slide this on over, and let's talk about this one. First, I want to type in the expression. I see that it's involving b's, so that's fine. I've got a fraction, but inside that fraction, I've got another fraction in the numerator and another fraction in the denominator. So I'm going to push the slash again. I've got b minus 1 divided by b. And then in the denominator of the main fraction, I have another fraction. And that's 1 divided by b squared. Once I finish typing the expression, I see that it asks me to add the slider. I'm going to click yes, and now I've got my slider. And right now, it looks like my expression is equal to zero. Let's plug in answer choice A. That's B, parentheses, B minus 1, and let's see. Yep, it's still zero, but let's see what happens when I slide this. And I get, oh, it looks like it's the same thing. All right. And I'll slide it all the way down here into the negatives. And it looks like I got lucky, and answer choice A is the correct answer. If I'm not sure, maybe I go type in another one. Let's try, try uh, answer choice B, B squared, and then a parenthesis, B minus 1. Just to be sure, oh yeah, those are not the same thing. And if you want to type in answer choice C and answer choice D all at the same time, so you can see that the only decimal that's matching up is the correct answer, and that was answer choice A. So we got that a little bit faster, answer choice A. 
Let's look at our third and final example in this tutorial. And let's see what Desmos can do for this. Let's clear out all those things that we just did. And this time I'm calling up a cube root. So remember to find the cube root, I'm going to go to the keypad. I'm going to go over here to functions. I'm going to go to the miscellaneous. And I'm going to call up this nth root. So the nth root means I can type in whichever root I want. And I want a cube root. So I'm typing in a 3. And then I'm getting into the radical. Inside the radical is a fraction. So I'm going to type the forward slash. And I've got negative 8, a to the 12th. And in the denominator, I've got b cubed. So again, we've got two variables. And I'm going to add a slider for both of them. Great. Right now, I have the expression is equal to negative 2 when a is 1 and b is 1. Let's see what answer choice a looks like. I've got a fraction. I'm type, typing negative 2, a to the 4th, divided by b. Oops. Down to the fraction, divided by b. And it looks like it's also negative 2, but again, 1 is, very, is not a very good number. So you definitely want to slide that around and see what happens here. And OK, again, it looks like it's being the same number, but that's just moving one of the variables. Let's change the other variable and see. Oh, wow, look at that. It must be the same thing again. Wow, I looked out and got answer choice A for both of these. I'm sliding them all around, and I'm seeing that everywhere I slide both of the variables, the answers or the decimals are matching up exactly. So again, I've got answer choice A. Again, if you want to look at answer choice B or answer choice C or answer choice D, you can type those in and see that those decimals are not the same. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and have fun with this packet practicing with your Desmos calculator. Thank you.